Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I just want to show you a bit of progression and talk a little bit about that with you. Uh, mainly, the, the thing that I really want to impart today is like being patient with yourself and allowing your, you know, your transformation to happen over longer spans of time. Um, and, and that never stops, right? So you're always going to try to tweak your art, get better, figure out ways you can you know, adjust your style, uh, everything from proportions, perspective, you name it. So with this one, I wanted to start with uh, uh, the Spider-Man art that I did about 11 years ago. And this was more of a painterly style, digital painting, and uh, I think I did it in Photoshop. I don't even know if I used Clip Studio at the time yet. And then the one on the right is done in Clip Studio. They were both on, done on devices, on tablets. Um, I want to say both, well, the one on the left on the Cintiq, the one on the right on iPad Pro predominantly, and then I moved over to the desktop version, but that's the beauty of Clip Studio. You can get away with that. You can work on both of those devices. Uh, but predominantly, it was all done on the uh, iPad Pro. Um, and I don't think that's the big determining factor here. Um, you know, never never take what I say about digital art and say that, oh, uh, you know, I can only accomplish this in digital art. Maybe the colors, pencils, inks, and all that, I, I can draw traditionally as well. I just find it easier to edit and move things around. Definitely find perspective easier on digital, stuff like that. But but it's really not a one way. I like doing both. Like yesterday I was drawing on paper. So it, it's just I'm always bouncing around from these different tools. But the main thing here is to show you that, you know, what I thought was good 11 years ago, um, this was one of my favorite pieces for a bit. You know, I was like, wow, I'm really getting it. I'm really starting to... <laughs> draw spidey wall and now i look back retrospectively in 11 years i'm like whoa it's bubble balloon boy you know it's like there's a lot of bubbly muscle and anatomy um there's parts of it i still like it's just uh, i'm proud of myself for going for you know dramatic foreshortened shot like that uh but even that's not working the foot's really flat like yeah you know, i could critique this for days and i'm sure you can as well but the main thing is is that the progression the trend transition that I could see the transformation I could see from one to the other inspires me you know like so and what I want to impart on you is to be extremely patient with yourself and and then also you know taking into account how much do you draw a day like I try to get 8 to 10 sometimes 12 hours in a day I don't always get that I want to be fully honest sometimes I take weekends off and I go hang with the family and you know, I'm not drawing at all then, and maybe a little bit at night uh, before bed or something. And then on the other days, I'm I'm trying to squeeze in as much as possible, but I get distracted as well, uh, which is something we all have to be concerned with, with all the social media and likes and dislikes and trying to share your work and create portfolio sites and all that. But, um, you know, you got to have balance, right? But, but a big part of it is drawing a lot, studying a lot, doing a 60-40 split of like studying versus drawing in the beginning and then never really pulling away from maybe 80% drawing and 20% study and I don't think you should ever stop studying and relearning new techniques so for me looking the one on the right you know, I'm somewhat proud of it I still see flaws and and there's still things that could be better about the anatomy the proportions the the feeling of, of dynamic um, you know a composition in the shot you know more foreshortening better use of light and chat, all sorts of stuff. And I want to keep seeing those flaws so that I can keep improving. Um, and and again, I'm going to look back at this hopefully in 10 years, and I'm going to go, wow, look at all the flaws that I didn't see then. I should, I should probably make notes of them. That's why journal keeping is such a good idea. And so I got another one to show you, and I'll just share some more uh, thoughts on it. So this is a difference of um, Batman. This isn't as long of a span of time, but I sp I've spent a lot more time drawing Spider-Man. I, uh, I later, you know, I, I started drawing uh, Batman a lot later. You know, he always, he's always like, uh, for some reason, harder for me to draw in the beginning, probably because I just originally was just such a big Spider-Man fan. But uh, 2016 here, this was just recent 2022. Again, the only difference I could see here, Cintiq and uh, this was predominantly on the iPad Pro. Actually, this the one on the right actually started with a traditional art sketch. Uh, I think I did it as a YouTube. Yeah, I did it as a YouTube video, and then I carried it through on the iPad Pro and turned it into Batman and this this whole shot. Now, 
again, there's some very distinct flaws on the one on the right, some of which people were kind enough <laughs> to point out to me. Tangent with the uh, the grappling gun on the window. I don't know how to see it. Perspective is off a little bit. I did freehand most of that perspective. By that, I mean I laid in the perspective grids and I just inked over top. I didn't even draw it. And, and so the beauty of that is it, was, it sped things right up for me. Uh, the bad thing is, is I have some inconsistencies with the perspective because I was just kind of winging it. Um, I, I do still recommend that though, even though people called me out on it and they were like, yeah, this, that's not right. And this part's off and you know, true, but I saved a tremendous amount of time and I, I felt like I learned a lot by winging it, <laughs> you know, like sometimes you just got to wing it. But as far as the difference of, of drawing, the one on the left is, you know, again, bubbly anatomy proportions. He, he's, too squatty, almost looks like a you know shorter stature individual. The proportions aren't uh, working as well. Um, you know, it's not that I hate it. It's just it's again I see a lot of flaws that I wasn't picking up on then. And then again to the right, I've already been called out on some, and I've already got some things that I really should have did differently there. Like having his foot kind of sitting on that that smoke. I, it looked cool in my mind. But then after doing it, I'm like, yeah, that kind of doesn't work. It would have been better to do like the cool gargoyle ledge coming out, more perspective. Uh, yeah, I avoid it because I suck at gargoyles. But you know what? I quit avoiding things I suck at, right? So I get better. But at any rate, you know, again, looking at this stuff in a longer span of time, this one would be six years. Um, and, and, and hopefully as well, like if I look at my entire portfolio and it, you know, and you look at yours, hopefully you can see even a little bit of a, a speed up in some areas. Some areas you're probably going to look back and go, whoa, I, I deviated from something that was working. That totally happens. I've seen it in my own work. I think people have called me out on it. I, I've seen people talk about it with other artists. Like, man, their, their work from the, you know, this era was fantastic. And they got lazy. You know, you can that can happen. I, I look at drawing like it's like, it's like any habit and any conditioning of the mind or body. It's like you you can totally get lazy and fall out of shape with it. So you just have to be you know diligent and, and put that effort in and say, you know what, I'm going to treat this like, like I always tell people, treat it like a job today, even when it's not, and it'll become your career later if you want that. If you don't, you're just a hobbyist, that's fine too. But don't expect to get better if you're just dabbling. I mean, you're going to get a little bit better. Obviously, you're going to get better at anything you continually do. But the more you approach it as, you know, I'm going to hit this hard and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to bust through those roadblocks, then you're going to see some real improvements. Um, and hey, by, by no means am I saying, yeah, look at my work. I've improved so much. I got so much to improve on. I'm not even working pro. Like, like in the sense of I've never worked for Marvel in DC. I want to disclose that so people know I'm just doing fan art here. I'm a YouTuber. I teach online courses. I'm basically an online art teacher, and you know, and I love that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking that, but what I'm, I just want to be honest with people. I want to be like, oh yeah, look at my Batman art, and you guys get the impression that I that I'm trying to convey that I've worked on a Batman title. I have not, you know, but I'm still enjoying the pursuit of improving all the time. And if it happens, it happens. But that's, I don't know. That's not always my motivation. It's it's more or less getting better and better at this stuff. And maybe proving to myself that I could do it, but I do it for me. And then, well, obviously I do it as a teacher as well. Like if I'm going to teach comic art, I need to get as good as possible, figure out all the, the, the tips and the tricks and the techniques. And I have to imply that, my, you know, I have to implement that in my own work, but then bring it to you and share it with you. I mean, that's what a good art teacher would do, right? They go out and search the data, uh, figure it out, present it in the best way possible. Not perfect, but hopefully the best way possible. And uh, that I can bring it to you, and and that's what we do, and it, it's it's a good time, you know. And I'm loving the journey. So the other thing is this, and I'll, I'll bring it to a close. Um, I, I didn't want to make the whole episode about this, but I do want to throw it in there. Do not stop believing in yourself. You know that sounds like cheesy, like you know, like some fortune cookie type statement. But you know what? If you stop believing that you can do this stuff, you stop believing that you can get a lot better. You, you are going to slow down and probably stop. It's just the way it is. You really do have to drink the Kool-Aid. You have to believe in yourself and you have to be like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna make amazing things happen. Like, like think of it like this. When you're a kid and you're imagining all these things, your imagination's on fire, right? It's because you truly believe things. You're not, you're not uh, hindered 
by a bunch of uh, other <laughs> facts of life that hit you later that slow your imagination down and make you think real world, you're all imagination. To do that in your art, I feel like you just have to believe in yourself that you can draw this amazing, epic, just whatever. Like what you know, and if you do that, your imagination keeps a little bit closer to full till. I mean, there's a lot of other things. There's like what you put into your brain box, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Like you put stuff in into your eyes, it better be good stuff. You put you read books, it better be good books. You know, like you want to put good information in, obviously, but a big chunk of it is being excited about what you can do. And a lot of that, I think, comes from just flat out believing you can do it and, and, and that keeps you excited. So, I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, obviously, but I just wanted to throw that in there because I think a lot of times this is hard work. Like I, I heard one artist saying, I can't remember what it was, um, oh, you want to be a comic artist? Well, welcome to the hardest art profession out there. It was something in that idea and it, it, it totally was like kind of clicked for me i'm like yeah it is it is a tough game like there's a lot to it perspective proportions foreshortening anatomy you know light and shadow and the list goes on and on right it's it's a very complex series of topics uh mel <laughs> melded together if that's word, like you know brought together to form this dynamic art so you be ready for some hard work you know and and there's nothing wrong with that but you know, you got to be realistic, but unfortunately that can bring us down at times and make us not believe in ourselves as much in our ability, especially when we have, you know, a series of bad drawings. And and I just want to let people know, like, you know, go through my old portfolio sites. I, I delete stuff that, I don't know, some of it that really embarrasses me, but I try to leave some of it up there because I want people to see how bad this stuff used to be and, and, and how far, um, you know, I tried to improve. Like, I feel like if I delete all that bad stuff, it's not fair to new artists. You know, like, oh, yeah, I could always just draw pretty good. No, it, it, <laughs> I, got, I got art that, the one on the left here of Batman, I got art that makes that look amazing. Like, you know, um, I got I probably got boxes of bad stick figures as a kid. Like, you just, it's a, it's a transformation, and it happens over a long period of time. Keep in mind, I probably should have led with this. I've been drawing for over 30 years. I mean, I'm, I'm 46 now, or 47, goodness, I just had a birthday. I'm 47, and I um, started drawing heavily at about 14, but I had always drawn, as long as I could remember. So, I mean, really, I mean, shoot, would you count the beginning years? I mean, you know, but I took some, I took some uh, breaks where I didn't draw as much, probably. I, I usually quantify that to about 10 years of my life. So, I'm going to say, realistically, I've been drawing pretty heavily for at least 25 years and really 30 to 35 because I've always been an artist, I've always drawn, I've always doodled at least. Um, it's just when I hit 15, 14, 15, that's when I really started getting excited, excited about comics and drawing those pretty heavily. So anyways, I'll get out of here and let you guys go. Hopefully this is informative. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out different ways to inspire people uh, with their comic art and you know keep you motivated. So in closing, just remember, it is a journey. You have to be patient with yourself, but also believe that you can do it, envision that you can do it, and then go after it. So talk to you soon, and bye for now.